Good morning, mathematicians. This is week three. We're looking at Monday, and we're going to be comparing some decimal values here. This says William Shakier is confused, and he wants you to solve the following. You're going to use a comparison symbol to show your answer. First of all, boys and girls, let's remember that this number, 36 hundredths, when we're comparing it to this 5 tenths, do remember, boys and girls, that you can add zeros to the end of a decimal, and it doesn't change the value. So really, we're thinking about 36 hundredths as compared to 50 hundredths. So don't let this fool you. A common misconception that kids will make is saying, this one has to be greater than this one because this is two digits. This is 36 versus five. But no, it's all about the place value. This is three in the tenth, six in the hundredth. This is five in the tenth. And if I wanted to give it a hundredth, I would give it a zero. 36 is less than 50. So yes, 36 hundredth is less than 50 hundredths. Remember that, boys and girls. Zeros on the end of a decimal can be added endlessly, and they don't change the value. That will help us with this one as well. We have 42 hundredths as compared to 4 tenths or 40 hundredths. Well, this one in this case is larger because 42 is greater than 40. And then we're comparing those hundredths values. 42 hundredths is greater than 40 hundredths. Now we have 89 hundredths being compared to 9 tenths or 90 hundredths, right? Well, 89 hundredths is just one hundredth less than 90 hundredths. That is how those comparison symbols should look in this problem, okay? All right, boys and girls, let's go ahead and take a look at our next values here. We have got SASA, and it sent four space sloths into orbit. Each sloth spent 1,000 304 minutes in space before returning to Earth. How many minutes did the sloths spend in space in total, right? So here, boys and girls, we're going to be multiplying. You can use whatever strategy you learned in that math toolbox last year. I'm going to use the area model of multiplying. I'm going to remember that I'm multiplying 1,304. So I'm going to break that into its expanded form. Here I have 1,000. Plus, here I have 300 plus. There's no groups of 10, but there are four uh, groups of one, right? So I really have 1,304 broken into four columns. Now, yes, you could really skip this column since it's a zero. Anything times zero will be zero, but I went ahead and included it just for the sake of helping you to see how you break that apart into its values, right? Now we're going to multiply. Four times a thousand is four thousand. Four times three hundred, I'm really looking at four times three is twelve. And then how many zeros were outside that basic fact? Well, there were two zeros outside the basic fact. So four times three hundred is one thousand two hundred. Now I had four times no groups of ten, and four times four is sixteen. Remember, boys and girls, what you do in the area model of multiplying is now we are going to add 4,000 plus 1,200 plus 16, all right? Now, if I have anything that doesn't have partner place values, I'm going to go ahead and add them because that helps me to keep those values nice and aligned. Zero plus zero plus six is six. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 plus 0 is 2, and 4 plus 1 plus 0 is 5. My answer here is 5,216. Now, 5,216 represents a group of minutes, and it's the minutes that uh, the laws in total together spent in space. All right. Now, this is an exciting problem because this is the first time in our spiral review that we're really looking at a question that is not a review of fourth grade, but instead 
is a true fifth grade standard. So here we are starting our way into fifth grade review, finally, on week three, and we're reviewing some of the work we've done with volume. What is the volume of the below figure? So this is figure one. Now, I see three cubes, right? So a lot of students would be tempted to write three here, three centimeters cubed. But let's stop and consider that there is a cube supporting the second layer, isn't there? Otherwise, this top cube would fall into the hole. So think about it more like a layer. This bottom layer has to have three cubes. One, two, three, because there's a hidden cube underneath this one that's supporting it. So if there are three cubes on the bottom layer and one cube on the top layer, together that's giving us four cubes, or since it's volume, we would say four centimeters cubed because we can be specific about our unit. These are centimeters cubed, right? Now let's do the same thing for this one. I'm gonna draw a little line so we can see here we are thinking about the layers. Layer one had three, the layer two had one. Let's think about it here as well. I can't see all of the cubes, right, on the bottom layer, but I know that this top layer has a certain number of cubes that I can see, and the bottom layer is gonna have the same number. So even on the top face here, I see one, two, three, four cubes. I know that this particular layer has four cubes, two cubes by two cubes. It is an array of four cubes. This bottom layer is going to have the same thing. I see a length of two, a width of two. That tells me that there are four cubes on the bottom layer, four cubes on the top layer. In all, I have eight cubes or eight centimeters cubed, right? Now we could use the volume formula, absolutely. But when you can count the cubes like this and you see those cubes, this tells us certainly this is a good one for actually counting the cubes, especially here, because we can't use the volume formula. We have to really consider the cubes that we're seeing and count those cubes, all right? Okay, let's go back and take a look here at matching unit form to fraction form to decimal form, right? We're going back to the fourth grade standards here. Well, four tenths is the same thing as this, four tenths, right? Two tenths is the same thing as two over 10, and seven tenths is the same thing as seven over 10. So this is how it should look to connect my unit form to my fraction form. And now I'm gonna connect my fraction form to my decimal form. Seven tenths on top is the same thing as this seven tenths in the middle. Four tenths in the middle is the same as four tenths on the bottom. And we have two tenths, which is the same as two tenths. That is what we have to do for that particular problem. Now let's take a look at Elvis Presley. He sells pretzels in New York City. What a fun city. Last year, he worked 30 hours each week for 50 weeks. I'm going to circle that because I know those numbers are going to be important. Now, the last question really tells us our task. How many total hours did Elvis work last year? To figure out in 50 weeks with 30 hours each week, how many hours he worked in the whole year, we're going to need to multiply. So we're going to need to take 30 and multiply it by 50. Now, this is a great question to remember. Some basic facts with zero tricks for multiplication, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do here with you. Three times five is 15. And then I ask myself, how many zeros exist outside that basic fact? Well, there are two, and that gives me my answer of 1,500. So yes, we're going to write Elvis, worked 1,500 hours last year. That is the answer, and that is it in context. And that finishes out Monday of week 